guys, we are back. This is the Dana White Contender Series Preview 2020. This is week six. I am your host. I am Keith Schillen. I'm a writer for SureDog.com. I'm also the executive producer of the Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network. Uh, guys, we're coming off a really good week. We went four and one. I did make four underdog predictions. I hit three of them. The only fight I got wrong was the William Knight fight against, uh, uh, Brundage, I can't remember what Mr. Brundage's first name is. Um, yeah, I didn't like the elbows in that one. I thought they were illegal. Um, they were as close as it comes to being illegal, uh, but they were not called that way. So, I, you know, I've picked ones wrong before. I'll pick it again. But overall, uh, four and one, three underdog picks. I'm satisfied with that. Uh, let's get into this week's card. This week's card I actually like a lot better than last week. I think the talent is a little bit better. So a lot of um, pretty equal matchups. Uh, so let's get right into it. The very first fight, and I apologize if I butcher any of the pronunciations as, as we start off right away with the fighters' names that are kind of hard to say. But we have Ali Askab Kersioff versus Henrik Shigamoto. Uh, I really like this matchup. Both guys are really good. Both guys probably should already be in UFC or they're at least UFC level. We'll start with, uh, Kersioff. Kersioff is a 30-year-old from Russia, undefeated, 12 and 0. He trains under out of Eagles MMA, which is obviously a great team to be training out of. Uh, he's a Fight Night Global interim welterweight champion, though he won that title two and a half years ago when he beat former UFC veteran, uh, longtime veteran Husma Paharis for the title. Uh, he has not been in action since. The guy's a southpaw. He is a pressure striker. Really good timing on his shots, really good at beating his opponents to the punch. When his, when his opponents go to attack, he beats him to it. He's a little faster. Uh, I like that he attacks the body with punches and kicks. Uh, a lot of kicks to the body, a lot of leg kicks. Um, some things I like that he does is when you get it in that um, mid-range, a little bit past the phone booth, but in the mid-range, he, he'll come in with a step-in knee or, or a nice step-in elbow. Um he hits hard because he stays really compact and he keeps a high guard, so it's kind of hard to hit him. Uh, good entries on his wrestling. Um, he's pretty well-rounded. He's um, brutal ground and pound. Um, just a well-rounded fighter that I really like. Um, I, I knew a lot about him, so I, I just felt like I was going to be pretty confident in picking him before I even looked at the tape study of Enrique Shigemoto. Uh, and then that changed my mind because Shigemoto's good. Uh, this is a Japanese fighter who used to live in Brazil, but now trains in Switzerland. I'm not really too sure of the whole situation there, but he's 31 years old. He's a road FC veteran, uh, pretty well-rounded. He's best, very muscular. Like you see, um, I mean, you'll see him. He has a really good uh, physique. Um, hands aren't very fast, though they are pretty accurate. And he has, you know, big KO power. He has thundering leg kicks. He attacks the, the calves with his kicks. Uh, can fight out of both stances. Fights at a slow pace, um, but what I like about him is that he he fights he, like he stays at the pace he wants. And, and what I mean is like he can get his opponents to slow down the pace, but also um, he's sneaky when he's fighting slow. Like he he slowly um, marches down his opponent, and every time his opponent is standing still, he'll take an inch or he'll take a you know a couple of inches in. And he'll slowly get into your ring. So, um, I think it's more of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, a, a solid patience that he uses, or like, a, a experienced patient he uses to get into his, get in the range he wants, and that's when he starts picking up. Um, he holds his own on the ground, um, though he's not a great offensive wrestler. Uh, he does have a good guillotine that he'll jump to. If he's on top, he's got some brutal ground to pound. Um, as far as a prediction, this is a really great fight. Uh, like I said, I like both guys. I'm going to go with, um, Kersioff, who is a more technical fighter. I think he has more variety in his strikes. Um, and he has a higher output. He's, he also has faced the higher level competition. Um, lastly, give me the guy that's fighting out of Russia and Dagestan. You know, not the guy coming out of Japan. I think he gets a t uh, TKO late in the fight, maybe third round. I also think he gets a UFC contract. That said, I'm not as confident in this pick as I expected to be uh, prior to doing Cape Study. Uh, really good matchup to start off the fight. Uh, following that up, 
Uh, we have Mana Martinez versus Draco Rodriguez. And I like this matchup too. Uh, both guys are very young and both guys look promising. Uh, we'll start with Martinez. Martinez is 24, 6 and 1. Uh, coming out of Houston, he fights in that Metro Fight Club that's, that's been making some noise in Houston. He's the current, uh, Fury FC Bantamweight champion. He beat, um, he beat Rookie Tukos, um, a Bantamweight Contender Series al- alumni, uh, to, um, his, you know, on his record. That's, that's a good solid win. Uh, his only loss came by split decision to, uh, tough veteran, the fight god, Dulani Perry. I don't like that because I wasn't that high in Dulani Perry. Um, so that's, uh, not good, but it was a split decision. Um, Martinez is a southpaw, uh, he, but though he, he frequently switches stances, he's a counter striker with some big power. All of his wins, all of his pro wins have come by way of knockout. Uh, beautiful pull left hand, like, if, if, if you guys understand what I mean, like, it's like, almost, almost like a slip and rip, but he like, he likes to, he, he likes to counter with the left hand, so, so kind of, if his opponent um, throws a right, he'll slip to his left and then attack with his own left uh, straight after it. That's like that's like his best move. Um, he sets this up because it's a really good uh, head movement. Uh, he works the body well. Um, what I like is when he has his opponent hurt, when he sees any kind of glove, he really turns up the attack, but does it in a controlled sense. He doesn't just throw it for the, you know, swing it for the bleaches and knock him out. Like he sees the punches he's throwing. He sees. Uh, where he wants to land, um, and that's really important. He doesn't just kind of blindly throw. Uh, good leg kicks, uh, quick high kick. Um, what I like is he uses feints with his leg, like he'll kick a leg and then he'll suddenly, um, kind of like toss his hip over or like fake with his hip, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, that sets up his hand, and I like that. Um, he does make the mistake of dropping his hands to catch a kick, um, like even low calf kicks, and that's going to be a problem. The higher level he gets up because someone with a good high kick is going to see that and they're going to faint their own kick, have him reach down, and then high kick. Um, as far as grappling, um, not much of an offensive grappler, but pretty good uh, takedown defense. Um, though he does like the, the guillotine, um, which he has put people out with it, but I don't like that he jumps to uh, uh, the guillotine because, you know, I'm like a broken record. I, I talked about... Gus and Poirier often going for it. I know Brian Kelleher did it this past weekend on, the, on in the UFC. But overall, I think the higher you go, the less likely that is going to work. Um, and the times he's missed it and got stuck in the bottom, he has struggled to get up. Now, moving to his opponent, uh, Draco Rodriguez. He's 24. He's 6-1 and as a pro. He was 12-0 and as an amateur. His only career loss was to Tony Gravely, who is currently in the UFC. So that's, you know, not a bad loss. Um he was supposed to be on the contender series in the past, uh, but he was under contract with King of the Cage, who blocked him from fighting, which really sucks. I mean, that's one of the um, knocks on King of the Cage is that they haven't released a lot of the or there's been some um, people who haven't been released from their contract so they could fight in the contender series. I know uh, the TKO in Canada was like the same thing going on. Uh, you don't like that. Uh, Draco has some pro boxing experience. Um, what I like about Draco is he has fun in the cage. Like he's smiling, he's sticking out his tongue, uh, especially when he's winning. Um, he's a, a very aggressive striker. Uh, can be a little wild with his strikes. He's uh, even though he has that boxing background, um, he he's not that very he's not very technical. Um, he also doesn't he also likes pressing the action. He doesn't like to to get pressured. He doesn't like to be forced to fight on the back foot, which. You know, I say a lot, which I, I, there's not many fighters who do like fight off their back foot. Uh, he's a solid wrestler, uh, though he's been taking down himself often. Uh, when he gets to take down himself, it, it, a lot of them come from the body lock. It's kind of his specialty. Uh, he's pretty good in the scrambles. He is a, definitely a submission threat. He also loves the guillotine, so watch for that. Uh, he's got some good ground and pound. Um, so if he gets on top, uh, if this turns into a grappling battle, this, this could be fun. Uh, but actually, I think it's going to be fun in, anywhere because I, I think they both can uh, put it on the feet. This is a really tough fight to pick. I like both guys. Uh, Martinez, I think, is the more dangerous fighter on the feet, while Rodriguez is probably the more well-rounded fighter um, and probably has the advantage on the ground. I have flip-flopped on this fight. Um, I'm not very confident. I'm going to take Martinez because he is bigger and stronger. 
he has the ability to end the bout with like a single strike, and I don't know if Rodriguez does. I expect this to be a war. Um, I think both guys are going to have their moments, but I think eventually Martinez will find that kill switch and, and find the chin of Rodriguez and take him out. I'll say second round. I also think Martinez gets a UFC contract with the win. So that's two for two. So I got the first two fights. I think both guys get a UFC contract. Let's move on. Probably the biggest name on the card. We have Phil Hawes versus Hazmarat Bestayoff. Uh, Phil Hawes gets another shot at the UFC. Uh, I'm sure if you listen to the show, you're probably a, you're probably one of two things. You're probably a hardcore MMA fan or you're someone who really likes to gamble. And this is one of the areas where you can kind of get information. Um, if you are a hardcore fan, you probably know who Phil Hawes is. This is a guy that has been, yeah, he used to train at Jackson Winkle John. He was one of the main training partners of John Jones. The guy that, you know, coming up on the scene was compared to John Jones. Uh, he's had many moments to get in the UFC. He fought on tough. He fought on the contender series before. He lost both times. He's fought outside the UFC in some big organizations. Bellator, World Series of Fighting, uh, Brave. He technically has a 7-2 and two record. And with both of his losses coming to Luis Taylor, the PFL champion, and Julian Marquez on the contender series. So, I mean, those aren't bad losses. I mean, they're against quality people. He does have a unofficial loss to Andrew Sanchez on the Ultimate Fighter. He's only 31 years old. I, mean, I shouldn't say only 31. It's like 31 is probably your prime years or he's your prime years. So he really needs to, if he's ever going to put it together, he needs to put it together now. This guy has trained in some of the top gyms. Uh, Jackson Luka John, I know he's trained with Hard Knocks 365. I know he trained with Todd Shulman. I honestly have no clue who he's with now, but I'm sure it's with a with a top team. Uh, the guy's a very explosive athlete. Uh, you see him, he's absolutely shredded. Has good power. He's aggressive. He does well to keep his head off the center line. Has pretty good hand speed. Works behind a jab. Powerful leg kicks. So you can see why there was some hype on him. Like he's a good, he's a decent striker and he has the physical attributes. Uh, but his better, his bread and butter and why he really got a lot of hype on him is, is his wrestling. He's a really good wrestler. And this is a junior college national champion. He has very fast entries. Um, he gets on the hips. He drives right through, like he'll drive through opponent sprawl. Good top control, decent back takes. Uh, the two things that has been most concerning about him is he doesn't conserve his energy. He carries so much muscle and gasses himself out. Cardio is a big issue, and so is his chin. I mean, this guy's been rocked several times. Uh, go back to that Julian Marquez fight on the tennis series. Marquez landed that. You know, Marquez hurt him in the second round, and then had him on the ground. And when he, as Hall started getting up, or it looked like Marquez might have been like letting him get up a little bit. Marquez threw that uh, perfectly timed high kick on the break, and, and he sent Hall's into another dimension. Uh, going, uh, looking at Hawes' opponent, uh, Bestayev. Uh, Bestayev is a long and lengthy fighter. A good high kick, uh, and that's usually mostly due to he's a taller fighter. He can kind of get his leg up to his opponent's chin fairly easy. Um, other than that, he doesn't have too much boxing skills. Defensively, he has a lot of flaws. He's flat footed. He tends to square up a little bit instead of saying, um, in, you know, the bladed stance. He often drops his ha- hands, keeps his chin up in the air. Uh, he looks to wrestle because I would say he's a grappler, but he's definitely not a good offensive wrestler. I mean, his takedown defense is bad. So he does, I mean, the takedowns I saw him in action, he got from, like, his opponent slipping or him catching a kick. Um, he will jump on a guillotine, and I saw him finish a fight with a guillotine. Uh, when he's on top, he had decent ground and pound. Um, a lot of that comes from his long, uh, long arms, like if he, if his opponent, like, kind of pushes him off and he's standing over him, he can still kind of grab the legs and throw his punches down. Uh, when he is on, like, a side patrol or something, he does look to advance through the mountain, something like that. Though his grappling is pretty sloppy, like, I seen him get reversed, I seen him roll on his back, and I think some of that is he's very comfortable in his back, he'll throw up submission attempts from his back, uh, arm bars, triangles, even ankle locks, leg, leg locks, knee bars, stuff like that. Like, he'll attack, for submissions off his back. Um, I sound like a broken record. Obviously, you can finish right that way, but you gotta know when it's not working, when to scramble it. I don't know if we have that with him. Uh, as for prediction, 
this is this is the fight that I'm most confident. I'm gonna put my lock on this. This is a mismatch. I feel like we've said that a lot about Hall's fight in the past. Like he should be, you know, the next big thing, or he should overwhelm his foe, and it, and it hasn't happened. But that said, Hall's has faced a higher level than Covington and Bosti uh, than uh, Bastia is. He's probably like a hundred times the athlete that Bastia is. Uh, he's the better grappler than Bastia is. I think Hall's. I, I think he's just better than everyone. I think he picks apart on the feet. Um, until one of them initiated a grappling exchange, which I think calls the win. I expect calls to be on top. I expect him landing some ground and pound, and I think he ends this one early. I'm going to say in the first round. So I'll take calls. I'll take him by TKO in the first round. I think calls gets his UFC contract. This is my lock of the evening. Let's move on. Uh, a fight that I'm really looking fun to. Very fun, stylistic matchup. We have Cameron Church versus Sherrod Blackage. Um, Oh, I've, I've had to mention, so that's three fights in a row that I said, uh, fight against the UFC contract. So, three for three on UFC contracts. Move on to this one, Cameron Church versus Sherrod Blackage. Uh, Cameron Church is 29, 4-0, four, four stoppages. Uh, he was 5-0 and as an enemy. He's a com- um, Combate America's veteran. His competition hasn't been very good. Um, and there's not that much MMA film on him, though there is a lot of other combat sports, uh, film. Uh, this guy has Muay Thai experience. He's got pro boxing experience. Um, I, I, I'm sorry as I'm recording this. I don't know if you can hear a dog barking. There's some dog going crazy in the background. I apologize, guys. That's part of the business of, of taping. I... All right, guys. Uh, sorry about that. I actually stepped out to see uh, what was going on. There was a like little muddy kind of dog. It was like really, really one of these like dogs that you put in a pocket pocket. It was going crazy as they were walking down the street, uh, challenging my neighbor's pit bull, which wouldn't have worked out uh, too well for that little dog. But I'll uh, give credit. That dog had a little fight. He probably had more fight than, uh, than Phil Hall's did. Uh, let's get back to this uh, Cameron Church. Uh, like I said, he has got Muay Thai and pro boxing experience. Uh, he's not very athletic, but he's a very good, technically sound striker. Uh, he I like that he really presses the action, um, just stalks his opponent, does well. Uh, he has a he's a shorter guy. He, he does well to bob and weave. He's got some of the um, really impressive the way he bobs and weaves to get to his range. Nice jab, attacks with combination. I love the variety of attacks. It could be, it could be like a lead and left hook, could be a body strike. Um, really, would get inside and work the body. He got good power. He, he really sits on his punches. When he gets in real close, so look, he look for elbows. He's got some chopping kicks, a good clinch striking. Uh, he really has a good chin. I haven't seen him hurt in a fight. Uh, some of that has to do with him. He kind of rolls with the punches a little bit, or he like just bob and weaves, and this is completely, uh, he, and he, he does well to just walk down his opponent. He does that because he has no, it looks like he has no respect for his opponent's powers. At least nobody that he's faced yet. Um, Grappling wise, decent takedown defense, uh, a little sloppy on the offensive grappling, uh, though in his last fight he did get a rear naked choke, um, though he didn't have the hooks in and it seemed like his opponent just kind of broke. Uh, moving over to Blackage, uh, Blackage is, uh, 4-0, trains out of Syndicate MMA, uh, very poised striker, very, uh, he stays calm, a little bit of a slow starter, but, um, <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I kind of lost my tra- uh, train of thought again because the dog came back and was barking like crazy. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard it. I apologize if you did. Uh, back to this. Uh, I don't know why I left off. Blackage, he's a bit of a slow starter. Um, he likes to work in distance. Uh, his reactionary straight right is probably his best blow. He throws a lot of teeth kicks, um, a lot of leg kicks. Has decent power, um, but he's, he's nothing spectacular. Um, We'll go for a takedown, though he's probably a pretty weak defensive wrestler. If he gets on top, he has some good, pretty good ground and pound. Um, but I watched film on him, like, nothing really jumps out to me. Um, though I think he's well rounded enough to be a tough test. Uh, this, this is another fun fight. Blackish probably should have the advantage on the ground from what I've seen. But we're on the feet. If he stays on the feet, I'm really looking forward to this. I, uh, Blackish will need to keep this on, on the outside. Um, but if Church does, you know, is able to bomb weave, get inside into his range, and land some of his power shots. He's really fun to watch. I think he does. I think he turns up the volume um, on Blackage. I think he gets in there. I think he walks him down. 
and I think he lands something. Uh, I'm going to take Church to finish Blackage uh, with like a big combination, like a five punch combination. I'm going to say um, like a maybe even a walk off shot. Maybe I, I don't know. Like I just I like this guy Church from what I've seen. Um, you know he's got a lot of areas to grow on the ground, but on the feet I really like him. So I'm going to say third round knockout, and I'm going to say Church also gets a contract. So that's four fights. That is four contracts. Let's move on to the main event. We have Tafan Chukwi versus Al Matavio. I apologize. I know I probably butchered those names. We'll start with uh, Chukwi. Chukwi's 26 years old. He's 3-0 as a professional, 3-0 as an Ami. He's from Cameroon, um, but he moved to America when he was 10. He trains under uh, Lloyd Irvin. Uh, he knocked out William Knight in his last match. Um, Knight, who was on the Contender Series last week, got a UFC contract. Uh, so that's definitely a good win. I do think the stoppage might have been a little bit early, uh, but one or two more shots from uh, Chukwe uh, would have been done the difference. Uh, there's not that much film on Chukwe. Um, the night, film, my night fight was out there, so that's definitely the one that I was looking forward to most seeing. Um, I don't have the strongest take on him, though, due to that. He's built very similar tonight. Like he's a former heavyweight who now fights at light heavyweight, but is still short. Um, similar tonight. He's not as shredded as night, but he definitely has like a big chest, large arm, big, you know, muscle. He's a muscular guy. Uh, he likes some spinning attacks. Uh, I was most impressed with his clinch striking. He does well to create space. He, uh, does a lot of framing to land short shots. Um, I mean, you look at his physique, you just know he has big power. Solid takedown defense, but though I didn't see much offensively in, in the grappling. Uh, Mate- Matevo. Is eight and two, fought in the Alaska Fighting Championship, which is a huge red flag for me. Uh, I do not like fighters coming out of the organization. Now, there is once in a while one, but for the most part, there's a lot of very questionable matchmaking. Uh, he's actually the opposite of Chukwe, where he's actually coming up. He's undersized. Uh, he's fought at 185, 195, moving up to 205. He switches stance a lot. He has fast hands, fast kicks. There's a lot of high kicks. A lot of movement. He's light on his feet. He uses things well. There's a lot of things like um, he throws a lot of looping punches from his hips, kind of like similar to like Fedor and Lenenko, but without that Fedor closing speed. Like he fights similar where he wants to close with looping hooks and kind of like fighting spurts, like similar to what Fedor did, but not that explosive speed. Uh, he doesn't like a lot of pressure. Um, the times he's been losing fights is when he's been forced to kind of fight backing up. Um, I saw him do an Eminari role in a fight, uh, that he was winning and then lost the whole round because of that because he came up the bottom. I don't like that. Um, this is a tough fight to call, uh, because of, I would say, I'd say it's a tough fight to call because of the lack of film on Chukwe. I, I don't want to overreact because he built William Knight. Uh, if you listen to my picks last week, I'm not that high in William Knight. I'm still not that high in William Knight. So while it is a quality win, and uh, I could be wrong about William Knight. Maybe he wrecks it up in the UFC. I don't think he's done. Maybe he will. Um, I've been wrong plenty of times before. Um, that said, I don't want to re- overreact and, and get super excited about Chukwe because he beat, um, you know, a guy who's now in the UFC. That said, a win over William Knight is still much better than fighting anybody in the last year, FC um, organization. So I guess I will take... Uh, Chukwe, um, with not much confidence. I think he gets in close, lands some haymakers, ends this fight. Um, he's a lot bigger than him, so maybe in the first round. That said, if he wins and he gets knocked out, like, this is the guy that Dana White loves. Like, he, he's got the look, he's, uh, got backstories from Cameroon, he hits hard. So, I also think he gets a UFC contract. So, guys, I don't have any upsets this week. I took all the favorites. I apologize for that. I'm not a guy who's scared to take an upset. I mean, last week I took four out of five fights. I picked upset. So, uh, I think you guys will bear with me. Um, I, I make my picks. I write out my picks, who I'm going to take. And then I look at the odds to see if I had an upset. And this is the first week I did not. Um, I apologize, guys. But let me, uh, let me recap my picks. I got Kersioff versus, uh, over Shigamuto by third round TKO. I got Martinez over Rodriguez by second round TKO. I got Haas over Bastaya by first round TKO. That is my lock of the night. I got Church over Blackage by third round TKO. And I got Chukwe over Matago by first round KO. Uh, I, and I also got all five winners 
getting a contract. So, like I said, I got five stoppages. All five winners are getting a UFC contract. So, I'm really looking forward to it. I think this is going to be a fun night of action for the Contender Series. That's actually been a really, just a really fun season. Of, I mean, honestly, I think all the seasons have been fun. Uh, just a great concept. So, guys, I'll be back next week. Hopefully, all these guys that I picked win. Um, if you disagree with my picks or if you agree with my picks, hit me up on Twitter. It's at Keith Schillen MMA. Let me spell it. At it's K E I T H S H I L L A N M M A. Hit me up on Twitter. Tell me who you are picking and enjoy the fights, guys.